It's a great honor to be here today to tell you my story. The topic of my speech is a never surrender, making the impossible possible. When I was five years old, I started playing table tennis because I was too short. I had to stand on the wooden box. My father was my coach because he was also a champion. I guess this game was in my genes. When I was started to practice, I showed my talent and ability in table tennis. I've been winning since I was eight years old. I've won city titles and the provincial titles. I was asked to join the provincial team for professional training when I was 10 years old. But one day, my coach asked my father to take me home. My father asked me, do you know why you were sent home? Because the coach thought that I wouldn't be good in the future, as you too short. Even at the age of 10, I didn't fully understand what the decision meant, but I just wanted to continue to play because I could beat other players. Well, I had to leave. They stayed in the team. I, I, I wanted to a fight to show how good I could be. So I said to my father, I wanted to continue and to continue to practice. I wanted to show I have the capability and that I want to be the world champion when I grew up. The girls in the picture on the screen, include me, were rejected by the provincial team. Then we joined the city team instead. We trained extremely hard. I trained 13 hours a day. Yeah, you can see it. Um, 17, um, 13 hours a day, seven days a week, I practiced thousands of strokes each day. I had to move fast. I needed to wear some vest and to tie some bags around my legs, which weighed about 15 kilograms. When I took these off, I felt like I couldn't fly. In addition, the, we trained in a so poor. We trained in um, burdened, the bath house, which only had room for four tables. It was very cold in the winter and very hot in the summer with the temperatures raining about minus 10 in the winter and up to 40 degrees in the summer. But in my heart, I had the dream. I wanted to become world champion. When I was 13 years old, I had two chance to play in the national championships. During those games, I beat most of the national team players, even the world champion, but all the others, I won the championship. We that saying, Chinese championship is more difficult than winning the world titles because China has more great table tennis players than all the other countries put together. In line with accepted rules after winning the national championship, I should have joined national team. But four out of five national team coaches voted no, because they thought I couldn't beat taller and stronger foreign athletes. How could a four foot 11 Deng Yaoping beat them? So I was rejected again. Only the head coach, Mr. Zhang Xielin, supported my recruitment to the national team. He said, you think Deng Yaoping is a lack of a height, it's a disadvantage. 
I think because she is too short, she can always see the ball in a high position. So you can talk without any defense. I think a talking is so important. So I talk all the time. So in the end, I successfully entered national team. I realized that I couldn't copy other styles of playing because of my height. So I had to develop my own playing style, doing extensive research on records and the different types of rubber. And my coach and I finally decided to use long ping ball racket to match my attacking style. As you know, generally, only defensive style table tennis players would choose long ping ball rackets. Until now, I'm still the only one and the only athlete who could really master the long ping ball attacking style. My playing style can be summarized in three words. Ruthless, speed, and unpredictable. There is a reason why I dominated the world of table tennis for eight years. To summarize my career as an athlete, I started at the age of five, and I won my first world title at the age of 16. I was the youngest world champion in table tennis history. In total, I have won 18 world titles, including four Olympic golds, and kept the number one ranking for over 2,880 uh, 2, days. Thank you. <laughs> Which are the record still no one can beat. By the way, I'm also the first Grand Slam female table tennis in history. Thank you. I retired when I was 24. For many athletes, coaching after re retirement is a natural progression. But I wanted to do something different and challenging. So I went to university for my formal education. I went to Tsinghua University the best university in China for my undergraduate studies. While I was in Cambridge learning English by chance, I entered at Cambridge University graduation ceremony. There were many young graduates with their families, friends, and their faces were full of happiness. I stood there for hours watching them march into the Senate House, admiring those talented young graduates. I told myself, if one day I could study here. But another voice came out and said, no way, no chance. You have to wait until the next life. Finally, I graduated from Tsinghua University. After that, I went to the University of Nottingham to my master's. At that time, my longing for Cambridge University once again came to my mind. I started to think that maybe I could do a PhD in Cambridge. But, uh, my family, friends, and the coaches didn't support me. They thought it would be too hard for me. If I'm failed, that would be too embarrassing. Though, in my opinion, if I could do it in this life, why wait until the next? So I applied and was accepted. And finally, after spending five hard years, I completed my PhD. 
in Cambridge. And um, my research about economics impacts of Olympic branding, to be honest to say that, the graduating from Cambridge was very difficult. But I'm proud that I did it. So in China, athletes are so focused on their professional training that they lack a formal education. It took me 11 years from studying ABC to graduate from Cambridge. University, at 35, I finished my um, PhD in, in Cambridge. And economics is my major, particular for the Olympic branding. So since it was founded in 1209, Cambridge University has awarded a PhD to only one athlete who has won four Olympic gold medals. Now you can guess who is it. Thank you. So to summarize my speech today, the main message is to bring in stereotypes. Yeah. So the first is that the desired physical attributes of national team ping pong player were too prescriptive. The second is that there is a perceived idea in Chinese society that athletes are all brown but no brain. Finally, I want to say to those of you who have a dream that if I can do it, you can do it too. Thank you.